few years ago, we needed to renovate our parking lot and some of our facilities. And a big thing was access. How do people get access to our building? And we had an old building that was built in the 1960s. And of course it had a front step. Uh, it had little bitty bathrooms, narrow doors, bathrooms, um, lots of physical barriers. So that's really when I started to work with them the most is thinking about how can we remove physical barriers? Who can we go to? And Bill and Deborah were great in bringing in the adaptables and other groups like that, local groups that could help us think about how can we retrofit or change this? It's not disabilities or what people cannot do. There are 14,000 people on the wait list for the innovations waiver. And Jeremy already has a waiver. So this isn't about their family and about Jeremy. It's about helping other families that they see in need um, to motivate the General Assembly to address a problem that's been around for a while. I like to call them peaceful agitators. They, <laughs> they, their methods are always so calm and purposeful and inspiring and they really know how to bring attention to issues that most families deal with when they have someone in their family with a disability. We joined the Down Syndrome Associations nationally and locally when Jeremy was born. So we learned a lot about other parents. And um, so most of our work, like I said, has been as a volunteer in meeting Jeremy's need, what Jeremy needed. And in the process of doing that, we advocated for everybody like Jeremy. So um, a lot of the kind of work we had to do was with what he wanted, which was a typical life. In, 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 in trying to respond to some of Jeremy's needs, it was easy for, for me as an athlete to work with Jeremy as an athlete. And then of course that just gravitated towards Special Olympics and we volunteered there and did fundraising there. So uh, um, I, I think he kind of led us in so many directions. Uh, when we when he went to Beyond Academics, it op it opened up a whole new a whole new awareness for us. So there's no question. Well, most of the work we do has been done with people who have disabilities uh, through the form of volunteering or acting on the needs that we see as parents for our son Jeremy or other community members like him. So most of it has come from our personal experience and our needs of uh, what we see with him and the community. So for Jeremy. He has a sister that's a year younger than him, but was a year ahead of him in school. So he saw what she did, and that's what he wanted, what she did. So he wanted to go to a typical school. He wanted to uh, uh, participate in regular athlete, athletics uh, and basketball. He wanted to uh, attend college. He wanted to work. He wanted to live independently, and he wants to get married. So his goals were no different than her goals, but society tried to modify his goals for him. And we said, we're not having anything to do with that. Lindsay was planning her uh, college career at Wake Forest. And Jeremy was a year behind her in school and said, where am I going to go to college? And we went, oh, we'll have to start one. So we were both on the IDD advisory to Centerpoint. And we took that as a need in our community. And we started working knowing there was one in California and one in Maine. So we looked at those and then we started working on developing a Beyond Academics with some of the staff and another parent. And he was one of the first eight to graduate from Beyond Academics. Actually, when I became a full-time student at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, I was pursuing a degree in special education. And uh, the reason I had actually chosen to be, uh, or to enroll at UNC Greensboro was because I'd heard that there would be a program there uh, specifically a post-secondary educational program for individuals with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. The program is called uh, Beyond Academics and uh, it was an opportunity for individuals with IDD to, to be on campus, to have a, a college experience and to take classes uh, with their, um, their peers. And so for me it was an opportunity to pursue my degree in special education alongside the people who um, really were an inspiration and a motivation for me to even want to go into that field. So I quickly uh, hit the ground in Greensboro and started asking questions and making connections. 
and uh, found a way into the Beyond Academics program as a classmate, first and foremost, to the Community Connections class, where I sat in, uh, and I think really the, the first day, I sat in on a class next to Bill and Debbie's son, Jeremy. And Jeremy and I hit it off instantly. And uh, long story short, we experienced much of our college years together as roommates. And, uh, and that relationship just flourished and I became a Special Olympics, certified Special Olympics coach for Jeremy and got to see Bill and Debbie cheering him on along with all the other folks that they were there to support um, at our different tournaments and events that we went to uh, in, in Special Olympics basketball. And, uh, and it just, it sort of grew from there. So that's kind of how we got our start. You know, Bill and, and Debbie are certainly very deserving of this award. And, and you know, when I think about the Jack B. Hefner uh, Memorial Award, I think of the role that Jack, um, Big Jack, as they called him, played in, in his family's life and in the life of uh, his son with a disability. They have a way of, of getting people to go along and understand what the situation is and the needs are. And um, I just, I feel like they're, they're magnets. They, they just draw people to them.